Nigel and I are back this week. If you haven't That's listened right. to last week, go back and listen to it. We are doing the top 10 tips uh, for parents with middle schoolers. And we've yeah. shared a bunch of these over the years, and they've just been so helpful. And so we wanted to share them. And last week, you'll hear one through four. And you this week, you're going to gonna go hear back more. And listen to last week's. Yes. That's a, a big part. It's Don't a really big part. Go Don't skip to ahead. Last week's. Stop this and go back and then come back and finish listening. That's right. We are on number five. Number five. Number five. Um, and it's super simple. Become a student of your student. Um, in other words, kind of said like this. Don't just assume because they're your kid, you know them. Yeah. You know, actually get to know who they are and who they're becoming. Yeah. Um, and instead of just assuming, oh, I know, like, he's my kid. Of course I know. I know his interests. Um, care about what he's doing. Instead, yeah. of, instead of saying, like, hey, you need to be doing this. You, you should play basketball. You should do soccer. You well, I'm into video games. Yeah. I, this is what I like. This is who I am. Yeah. And, uh, embrace some of the stuff that your kid's doing. Not saying you can't have them do band or whatever. Right. But embrace with what they like and their interests. And and first off, be a part of that yeah. in their life. Be a part of the video games. If they love video games, be a part. Play video games with them. Yeah. See what they're doing. But also, be a part of the things they like doing in life instead of being like, you need to be doing these things only. Right. So, because you're showing them then that... God made them and designed yeah. them for a specific way. And maybe they're not like you were when you were a teenager. And maybe they don't like what you liked when you were a teenager. But you're saying like, hey, it doesn't matter. God made us all differently. And because you love it, I'm going to make sure that this is something we do together. And honestly, that will mean so, yeah. so much to I love your students. I love this quote. It says, don't wait for a crisis. You, can, you can't you can build a bridge during an earthquake. Yeah. So if you're waiting for them to, oh, my gosh, you're not, Elijah. This happened, and I'm trying to get. I, maybe I need to get to know him more. It's like, yeah. no, do that now. Have right. that relationship, that friendship. Yeah. Understand your student now, so that way when things do come up, you're already that built. That bridge is already built. So uh, good between you guys. So, it's so good. Super simple. Right yes. There. Okay. Number six. Get involved and stay involved. Listen, you have you know, a pretty short window of your students' lives that you get to be super involved. And so our hope, our prayer for your student is that you are involved. What we've learned over the years is that us as student pastors and our volunteers and our coordinators on campus, your student staff, like we have influence in your students' lives, but the person who has the greatest influence in their students' life is yeah. you as a parent. And so are you involved? Man, we would love to have you involved in Hope Students. We think that would be incredible. You just have to go through Fast Track. You can find that out on the website when the next one is. Um, be a part of their booster club. Be um, like, if they go have, if they're in games, if they're in theater, go to concerts, do all the things so that they know you care about them, that you love them. But our hope and our prayer is that you are involved in your student lives. And listen, it's going to be busy for a few years, I'm yeah. sure. But in the long run, it's going to be so worth it because your student is going to be like, man, my parent cares about me. And yeah, um, yeah it's well, just the, such a good the Barna principle. project, which does a bunch of surveys for teenagers, yeah. uh, just on better understanding. They said 90% of students said that their parent one of their parents is the is like the person they look up to the most in life. Not their youth pastor. Yeah. Like we we are we're the cool people they get to see once a week or twice a week, but you're the people that actually have that influence on an impact on what they're doing. And yeah. so don't don't underestimate how big that is yeah. for you to, to leave that impact. So. I heard this statistic too. I actually read it um, on a youth ministry site that I was on and it says that us as student pastors in the course from sixth to twelfth grade, we probably see your student 300 hours. We have 300 hours worth of influence, but you as a parent have 5,000 hours that's worth of crazy. influence. And that is insane. That's like over 10 times more than we have. And so, um, man, it just goes to show that you have more influence than you could even imagine. And so use that uh, yeah. in your students' life. Um, all right. Number seven. Number seven. Super easy. Parent towards relationship. Kind of what we talked about a little bit, um, but the, this idea of, you know, not parenting for fear, but parenting for that friendship and relationship yeah. is the goal of like, hey, I, I, like, I want to know you so so much that we are building a relationship with one another. Yeah. I love that line that Will, Will says here. He says, you don't, uh, you don't want to wait for well, or sorry, you don't want well-behaved kids who can't wait to leave the house. Yeah. Um, like if, if all they're doing is trying to be well-behaved, then you're missing a big part of yeah. developing who they are. Yeah, and so, so true. Parent towards that relationship. Say you're sorry. Be be the person you want your kids to be. Yeah, you know, that's so when good. When you say, when you say, "Hey, you need to apologize. You need to be respectful." You show them what they're being respectful. You show them what being a good person looks like, and building that relationship of, of you know, that kind of that bridge of like, 
who this is this is who I want you to be yeah. and I I'm, I'm going to show you the example of what yeah. that looks like and so yeah. um super simple and I think just you know making relationship the target for your parenting is like yeah. um like they become adults they're going to become adults it's not just about the rules and yeah. foundations it's about you know who they're growing into super easy so yeah no that's so good um number eight be an example at church um i think it's so cool when i show up on the on a weekend service and i see families sitting together and i see moms and dads and their bibles are out and their notebooks are out and they're taking notes and they're studying they're being a doer of the word um and and like they are studying what god is saying and they're taking it all in and then they're going home and they're waking up in the morning or the last thing before they go to bed at night they're reading their bible and their students see that like you are showing them that one of the most important things one of the most important relationships in your life is a relationship with the lord and if they see you doing that as an adult and how important it is to you they're gonna go man there must be something to this and it and it's showing them how they can be and hopefully how they should be when they're an adult and so um you know take notes being engaged during worship volunteering at the church and maybe volunteering together as a family um also, I think something that's really cool is sharing your story. How did you come to know the Lord? What are some of the things that you've journeyed through, some of the hardships, and you've seen God show up in your life? Um, and I, I think it's good for our students to know that because I think sometimes we can tell our friends or people who are far from God, like we're trying to show them who God is. But, man, showing our students and sharing that with our students, I think, can be crucial to their spiritual growth. Yeah. And, you know, as a pastor, we get this question all the time of like, or parents come to, why are my, why is my kid not behaving? Why is my kid not doing this? And like you said, you guys have more influence and yeah. more impact than we could ever have. Um, and like embracing that role, accepting that role is, yeah. is huge. So, so good. Um, last, or I guess nine, uh, this is probably the last one. Um, yeah. Don't freak out. Don't freak out. Uh, that sounds very simple, but sometimes it's very hard yeah. you know, when your student comes to you with a crisis or, yeah. you know, mom, I'm gay, mom, I'm, I'm, I've thought about suicide. Yeah. The worst thing you can do as yeah. a parent is freak out, especially at them. Like, yeah. how could you do this? Why would yeah. you say that? You can't be like yeah. that. You're, You're a looking Christian. at pornography, right. you know, like don't, all the things. Don't yeah. make it, don't freak out and make it the biggest deal in right. the whole world. Yeah. It's, it's important to, you know, just first off, listen, listen to where they're at. Just like you want people to listen to you when you're going through hard times. Yeah. Your children, your your teenagers need, they need you to listen to them and embrace where they're yeah. at. I'm not saying you have to accept everything they're doing. Right. I'm saying you listen, don't freak out, don't don't blow your casket. Ca- right. Gasket. Gasket, yeah. <laughs> don't blow your casket either. <laughs> don't do that either. Um, right, yeah. <laughs> but check your face. Make sure you're, you're, you're not overreacting. Yeah. Listen, you know, be loving in yeah. the moment. But also take that after after you listen to give that advice, yeah. to say, hey, I went through something similar. I yeah. can help you. Or I don't know anything about what you're going through, yeah. but I know that we can get through this. Yeah. And so giving that advice after, you know, there's a story of a girl, uh, a parent who actually is from McKinney campus and her daughter, I'm hoping they get this story right. Yeah. Her daughter is an eighth grader, came to her uh, and uh, to her parents and said, yeah. hey, I think I might be gay. Yeah. I think I'm, I'm struggling with this. I might be gay. Um, and pretty much, long story short, what happened was a year, like, she, she didn't freak out. Yeah. She, she kept saying that to herself. Don't, Don't freak, freak out. out. Don't, Don't freak, freak out. out. Don't freak yeah. out. Yeah. And what happened was a year later, her daughter came to her and was like, you know, I, I don't think I'm gay. I, I, I just think it was that boys weren't paying attention yeah. to me. Which, what boys pay attention to girls in it's middle school? It's crazy. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. And so um, imagine maybe she did freak out yeah. and, you know, set the stage for her daughter yeah. to be like, I'm wrong. Everything inside me is wrong. Yeah. And then it, it makes her feel like she's living in something that she's yeah. maybe not actually living in. So. And because she didn't freak out, she opened communication with her husband, herself, and her daughter to continue to the conversation. Right. And she was able, they were able to continue to talk about it. And her daughter felt open enough to continue to come to her and even say, like, hey, I actually don't think that that's true about me. Yeah. Um, there's a book by Shanti uh, Feldhan. I don't know if that's how you say her name, but it's called For Parents Only. And it says, you freaking out during a situation, during a hard situation is the easiest and fastest way to cut off communication with your student. Yeah. You freak out, your student shuts down and they stop talking to you about stuff and that would be a tragedy right. um, because they they trust you. You're such an influence in their life. They literally, they need you so much. So parents, um, man, you can do this. We love you so much. You can do this. You're not alone. God is with you and so are we. Yeah.